This upcoming June, I'm gonna be pursuing a dual degree in international studies and an MBA at Wharton. And so I wanted to share today how I got in and some tips for you in case you're interested in applying to MBA programs. Jumping straight into today's agenda, I'll first provide an overview of how the admissions process works. I'll then go over the essential parts of my Wharton application, and then I'll conclude with my top three tips for applying to MBA programs. All right, so first up, let me give you a quick rundown of the MBA application process. The five essential parts to any MBA application usually are your academic stats, which includes your undergrad GPA and GMAT, your resume, which includes your professional and extracurricular experiences, essays, letters of recommendation, and interviews. If I had to weight these in terms of importance, I would say that roughly speaking, academic stats would be 30%, resume 45%, essays 15%, letters of rec 5%, and interviews 5%. And I'll explain why I broke it down like this in the next section of the video. Like I said, these percentages are really, really rough figures based on my own experience, so please don't quote me on them. And admissions officers always like to say that they view each candidate holistically, meaning that one category is not necessarily going to make or break you, but it is within your best interest to do the best you can within each category and submit the most well-rounded application you can. All right, so I kept that really short because I know what you all really came for is my stats and Wharton application. In this section, I'll go over the five key essential parts of the application that I mentioned earlier on in the video and why I ranked each of them the way I did. Starting with academic stats, I had this at 30% because your GPA and GMAT are really good indications of whether or not you're gonna be able to handle the academic rigor of a graduate level program. And particularly your undergrad GPA is a really good test to see basically what your work ethic is because it's a, it's a long history of how hard you worked over the period of three to four years. For me, I had a 3.6 GPA from UC Berkeley where I majored in business administration and minored in creative writing, and I had a 750 on my GMAT. Based on Wharton's class of 2023, this put me at the average for GPA and a bit above the average and median for the GMAT. Honestly, I didn't really have a high GPA and mainly it's because I focused a lot more on leadership positions and kind of just having fun in college versus really, really just hunkering down on classes. At a certain point, I didn't really see the value in a lot of classes after I had finished recruiting as well. But I will say that if you're still in college and you're really interested in getting an MBA, I do think it's important to have as high of a GPA as possible. Back in college, I did didn't actually really know or think that I was going to uh, apply to an MBA program. Next up is the resume, which I had at 45%. And by resume, I don't just mean that one page document. I mean your professional experiences and your extracurricular activities. This is by far the most important part of your candidacy because it's just the best indication of how you're gonna perform in a work setting. And at the end of the day, an MBA program really cares about how you're gonna do in the professional world the most because it's gonna be the thing that really enhances the program's reputation the most. And also in the future, if you're really, really successful as an alumni, you would donate to the program. But anyway, for me, in terms of my professional experience, I worked at JP Morgan as an investment banking analyst for around 2.5 years. I then took six months off, backpack and traveled around the world for a bit. And then for around two years, worked on a fashion brand that I started called Aesthetic Studios, which aimed to be the Nike for creatives. I would say that my set of experiences is pretty odd in an MBA application because most people don't like just quit and travel around for a while. I also had something very traditional in terms of banking and finance. And then I had something a little bit more on the riskier and different side with the fashion brand. And so I'm sure the admissions team when they saw my application were like, huh? Like, I don't understand this guy. This leads to the next category, which are essays, which I weighted at 15%. And essays serve a really important function of tying your overall narrative and story together. Now personally, and I think this is the general consensus, a really, really good essay is not necessarily going to be able to make up for poor academics or poor work experience. But after all the other categories in your application are kind of checked off and you hit the standard that the MBA program is looking for, an essay can either make or break your overall application and either get you to that next round, which is the interview or get you rejected. As I previously mentioned, my experiences in finance and fashion were pretty odd, but I tied everything together as best I could in my essays and instead of going into a super long spiel I'll just give you the short version of what I wrote now. 
Ever since I was 10 years old or so, I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but when I went into college, I didn't really know what kind of business to start. And as I just talked to older people, banking was something that really got me interested as I started investing into the stock market. And then so I went into investment banking, worked at JP Morgan for a few years and thought I would just continue my career in finance. But then in 2017, my mom was diagnosed with ALS and that's a terminal disease where your muscles slowly start to deteriorate. And so it really just caused me to think about what was really important to me in life and whether or not I was pursuing my dreams. And so I took off some time and that's when I basically decided to travel. And uh, I traveled around for six months, spent, spent some time with family. And as I was doing so, I thought of this idea of aesthetic studios, which would be the Nike for creatives, like I mentioned. And it combined my previous passions of wanting to be an entrepreneur, my interest for the arts, which really stemmed from my love for English, which was just my favorite subject since the ninth grade. And so I worked on the clothing brand for two years, but then it was really tough during COVID and also just not having that much fashion experience and creating this consumer goods company from scratch it was just really, really tough. So I decided to close it down. And then that's when I applied to business school. That's essentially what I wrote about in my essays. And I also talked about my career goals, which involved creating some kind of business that helped artists and creatives economically, kind of like an extension of aesthetic studios, but I wanted to approach it in a more tech focused way. And then later on, I talked about how I wanted to start a venture capital firm focused on the creator economy. And so those are the really things that I mainly covered in my essays. And so even though my experiences in finance and fashion were very distinct and different, there was overall continuity throughout my narrative and application. The next part of your application is the letter of recommendation, which I weighted at 5% because if you're gonna ask someone to write your letter of rec, they're probably gonna write a pretty good one for you, although there can be bad ones. So you do wanna make sure that you provide your letter of recommendation writer with previous experiences that you two have worked on and kind of like nudge them in the right direction of what kind of things you really want them to draw out. That's actually the best practice. You can't write your letter, the, write the letter yourself, of course, but just kind of giving them the information that you want to present to the admissions team is really, really good practice. And I waited at 5% just because everyone is probably gonna have a pretty good letter if they're a high achiever. And this is more of a check off the box kind of thing. Most MBA programs require two letters of recommendation. And I got one from my previous boss at JP Morgan and one from my co-founder from my fashion startup. As a result, it's really, really important that if you're interested in applying for an MBA program that you maintain really good relationships with your bosses and colleagues at work. Last up are interviews, which I weight at 5%, not necessarily because they're not an important part of the process, but it's really just that last step and it's invite only. And so not everyone's really going to get to this step. So that's why I weighted at 5%. Roughly speaking, for the top MBA programs, if you get an interview, your chances now jump to something like 50%. So it is a really big deal to get an interview and your chances increase a lot. And in the interview process, what the admissions team is really trying to figure out is first, whether or not you really are the person that you say you are in the rest of your application. Second, they're trying to see why you really want an MBA. And third, they wanna really take out the jerks out of the process because Regardless of what you may think an MBA, MBA grad or MBA student is typically kind of like, the admissions team actually really cares a lot about humility and cho choosing people who are kind of like team players and are not going to really detract from the overall MBA experience by being people that you, know, you don't want to hang out with. Most schools have one interview that lasts something like 30 to 60 minutes where the interviewer really just digs into your personal and professional experiences. But for Wharton, there's something called the team-based discussion and then afterwards a 10 minute one-on-one -on -one interview. In the team-based discussion, you're paired up with four to five other candidates and together you answer a prompt which you are given ahead of time. And for our year, our prompt was something like, can you create a strategy to get alumni more involved? And so we gather all of our ideas, discuss everything, determine what our final proposal is gonna be and then present to our interviewers who usually are students who are currently second years in Wharton. I think most people are a bit nervous about the team-based discussion just because you're working with people you've never met before and you're being judged by two interviewers at the same time. But I would say that my best advice if you ever go through this process is to not actually try to be the alpha, alpha or try to outshine everyone else but instead be, try to be the person that is really, really open and listening to everyone else's opinions. And if you're able to draw consensus out of everyone, I think that's usually the best place to be. And so that's the general approach that I would really try to take for team-based discussion. 
All right, so that covers my application and does require quite a bit of work. It took me a few months to pull together my applications. And if you actually wanna see them, you can actually purchase the essays and applications that got me into Wharton and Columbia. And you can find those down in my description below at rareliquidcareers.com. Last up, let me go over three tips for your own business school apps if you're interested in applying. The first, and in my opinion, the most important tip that I have is to really, really focus and understand what your narrative is and why you're applying to business school. Regardless of how great your academic stats are or if you have really, really outstanding professional experience, you have to remember that the top MBA programs have so much competition and there are a ton of people with really, really high GMAT scores or people who work at the best investment banks or private equity firms that just don't always get into the top programs. And so you're always competing with kind of the best of the best depending on where you're applying. And one of the ways that you can stand out is by making sure that you have a very cohesive story that really tells a narrative as to why your life turned out the way it did and also why they should really kind of choose and support you as a candidate. This requires a lot of introspection and I just really recommend going all the way back as far as you can back to elementary school and thinking about what your passions were back then or what your interests were, how your life kind of unraveled and why you made certain decisions throughout the pivotal periods in your life. And throughout all that kind of introspection, the story that you should be telling and what your future goals are as a result should kind of align and be able to start making sense. After you come up with your cohesive story, it's really important for you to figure out why you need to go to business school at the time you're applying. And I think the best way to figure this out is by really doing a lot of research into the different programs that you're interested in and all the different courses and career opportunities that these programs really provide to their students. All of them, all of them should really pop out. Um, the different programs are actually very different from one another. And so as you do more research into the programs, I think the answers of why you need an MBA should really become apparent as you do that research. The second tip I have is to treat your overall application like a jigsaw puzzle. Basically what I mean by this is that all of the different parts of your application should come and fit together and create a nice little picture. There shouldn't be too much repetition in something like let's say your essays and resume and your letters of recommendation. Each part of your application should try to show a different side of who you are while overall sticking to that cohesive story and narrative that you're trying to tell. The third and last tip that I have is to be interesting rather than impressive. Your academic stats and your professional experiences are going to be what they are. And as I said a little bit earlier on in the video, admissions teams are really always trying to weed out the jerks and people who are too arrogant or cocky from the overall admissions process. And so it's really within your best interest not to try to sound insanely impressive, but it is really, really helpful if you can have a really, really interesting kind of story to explain why you're interested in the MBA or if you have personal or professional experiences that really help you stand out, then it's important to really hone in on those. All right, so those are the tips that I have. I know they were pretty brief, but later on, I'll probably make a video that goes more into detail of how to get into MBA programs. And I'm also creating a really, really extensive resource of getting into MBA programs. And so if you're interested in that, leave your email down in my Google form below. Lastly, if you're interested in purchasing the applications that got me into Wharton and Columbia, you can check those out at rareliquidcareers.com. And you can also check me out on Instagram and TikTok for more content. And with that said, thank you so much as always for watching. Hope to catch you in the next video. Thanks and peace out.